Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Pang YouTube channel. Today we're solving 564, find the closest palindrome. And before we get into it, please subscribe to the channel, it really helps me grow. Given a string n representing an integer, return the closest integer, not including itself, which is a palindrome. If there is a tie, return the smaller one. The closest is defined by the absolute difference minimized between the two integers. So let's look at an example here. We have 1, 2, 3. And obviously the next closest palindrome is one, two, one. Um, we could also have something like two, 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 but obviously the difference between two, two, two uh, to one, two, three and one, two, one um, is much smaller when we have one, two, one. So we prefer one, two, one. So just looking at this problem, it's pretty simple to figure out what you need to do. I mean, it's you can kind of just do it in your head, but unfortunately we need a computer to do this uh, and it becomes much more complicated. And they give you some really bad test cases here, uh, which don't give you um, kind of a full insight here. So let's kind of walk through a better example, which will kind of help us figure out the cases here. So let's look at a number like one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> So what are the closest palindromes we could make? Well, we could flip um, around the axis, which in this case is three because it's an odd length. We could flip the front and create a palindrome that way. So we could flip this and say one, two, three, two, one. Now you might be asking yourself, why don't we flip four and five? Well, if you think about this, one and two represent the biggest digits in this number, right? In this case, this is the 10 thousands and this is the thousands. So we don't want to potentially flip something smaller um, to the front. It, we want to just keep the front as it is because we might accidentally screw something up here. So these numbers, we want to move them to the end because this represents the kind of ones and the tens. So we don't want to mess anything else by accidentally kind of flipping something bigger to the front because that will take us further away, right? Because if we rotated this number, um, obviously four, five, uh, five, four, three, four, five is nowhere as small as one, two, uh, three, two, one. So that's why we don't really flip the end pieces here. So let me get rid of this kind of red highlighting. Why won't it go away? Okay, whatever. So that's one we could do is we could keep the middle the same and just flip the front. Now, unfortunately, sometimes you'll have cases where that doesn't quite work. So let's look at the number one, three, one. Uh, 139, right? If we were to do that, we would get 131, but actually the closest palindrome is 141 because we can just increment the middle and then flip um, the left side. So that's going to be the next two that we can do is actually what we're going to do is we're going to increment and decrement the middle number and then flip around the first thing. So we could do 1, 2, 2, 2, 1. We could do 1, 2, four, two, one, and then those would be um, more candidates here. Now, unfortunately, we also have problems where we have um, edge cases, right? Where we could need to potentially, you know, if we have a single number like nine, go down, um, or if we have something that's like 11, we might need to go down to nine. So we need to handle the cases um, basically at endpoints. And another kind of possibility here is to basically just take the current number of digits we have, basically it's uh, five in this case, and then we can reduce the number of digits, but then all nines, right? So in case we have something at the end, so if we had a number like, I don't know, one, 10,000, the nearest palindrome would be 999. Uh, but then also if we had something like 9999, then the nearest one would be add a zero and then add a one. So we always will take the number of digits that we have, subtract one from it, and then all nines of that digit. So we have five digits here, and we'll do four nines, and then we'll take the number of digits we have, and then basically just make sure that we have, uh, so this is what, five digits. So we, I think, did I add an extra one? Um, yeah, I did, sorry. We'll basically just um, have, one minus that in zeros, but then add zero and one. So again, this is the case where you have nine, nine, nine. Yes, let's see, is that 10,000? Yeah, so nine, 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 obviously the nearest palindrome is zero, 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 one. So that's handling this case. And the nine, nine, nine case, this is handling basically something like 10,000. So we basically just want to handle those edge cases uh, where it might be easier to actually just decrement down uh, by one. So that's why we have those and those are always a candidate. But basically just to recap, what we want to do 
is we want to take our number, we want to flip uh, around, basically just mirror around the, the left half from whatever the midpoint is, and then mirror that in the right side. We can do the same, but we're actually going to decrement whatever the middle is by one. We can increment the middle by one, and then we're also going to do these kind of tricks uh, to handle these uh, edge cases here uh, on the endpoints. So those are the five cases that you'll always have to consider. We just need to generate these numbers. The tricky part is just kind of finding the palindrome number uh, in the front. But other than that, there's only five cases that we need to handle here, and those will be all the cases um, that you need to generate. And then you can just find whichever one is actually closest to the target string. In our case, the target string was one, two, three, four, five. We can just find the difference and then return whatever the smallest one is. And there you go. That's your solution. So let's now go to the code editor and type this up. It's pretty complicated, the code. Unfortunately, this is just one of those stupid leak code hard problems that for some reason, someone came up with this, this shit and yeah, we just all have to suffer. Anyway, I'll see you in the code editor. Let's type this up. Okay, we're now in the code editor. Let's type this one up. It's a bit complicated, so bear with me because it's, this one's going to be fun. So the first thing that we want to do is define a few kind of helper variables here that we're going to be reusing so we don't have to basically keep reinitializing them. So we're going to say the length of our... Um, string here is just going to be the length of n. We're going to need this. We're also going to need to know whether or not um, n is even length or odd length. So we're going to say is even is going to equal to what? We're going to say if the length of n um, modulo, modulo 2 equals to 0. So that is how we find if it's even. Now what we need to do is actually find what the first half of the array is. Um, so that way we can actually flip that um, because if you remember when we have something like one, two, three, four, five, then we want to basically flip the first half of the array uh, and we need to know what that number is in order to flip it. So we need to find the index of the midpoint. So the mid is going to equal to basically, depending on whether it's even or odd, we need to do a different calculation. So if the number is even, then the midpoint is simply going to be uh, length of I'm sorry, length of n divided by two minus one. Uh, if is even, otherwise if it's odd, it's just whatever the midpoint is, right? So if it's one, two, three, four, five. If it's odd, it will give us uh, three. If it's even, it will give us two. Uh, in the case that we have something like one, two, uh, four, five. So, okay, now. What we want to do here is that's the midpoint, but we need to get the first half of our number here. So we're going to cast to integer parsing from the beginning of our array up until the i plus one index, and that will parse out the number representation of the first half of the array. So again, if it's one, two, three, four, five, we basically parse out uh, one, two. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can actually start going through our possible solutions. So we're going to say possible solutions, uh, and this is going to equal to an empty array. Now we need to generate the five uh, solutions that we talked about, right? And remember, we'll go through them one by one. So we're going to say possible solutions dot append, and we want to pass into a helper function, which is going to help us actually create the palindrome for us, and we'll define that in a second. So we're going to say half um, to palindrome, 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 and we're going to pass in the first half and then whether or not um, our um, number is even because that will actually de determine whether or not we need to do some extra logic. And we'll, we'll implement this in a second. So remember that the, if we have a number like oh God, what is going on? If we have one, two, three, four, five, we need to do one, two, three, two, one. So this is the first thing that we're going to generate. Now let's generate one, two, three, um, sorry, one, two, four, two, one. So this is going to be possible uh, solutions .append self dot half. Let's clean this up a bit. Self dot half to palindrome. We're going to do the first half of the array. So in this case, the first half of the array is basically going to be one, two, three. Uh, so we need to increment that last uh, element, right? So to get one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four uh, we need to increment the, the final point. So we need to do first half um, plus one, and then we're going to pass in is even. 
and that will be kind of uh, another potential solution. Now remember we need to do one, two, two, one, oops, two, two, one, uh, and this is gonna be the same logic as here, except in this case, we're going to do first half minus one. So we can just copy this to save time, and instead of plus one, we're going to do minus one. Now remember that when we have a number like one, two, three, four, five, it could be the case if the number was um, just 10,000, that the closest palindrome is actually 999. So we need to find the closest um, number that's basically all nines. That's one kind of um, decimal place uh, smaller than our current one. So in this case, we have basically 10 thousands. So this is, you know, five places. Uh, we need to generate one that has four places and all nines. So the way that we're going to do that is we're basically going to say possible solutions append. And in this case, we're just going to do 10 times the length of whatever n is. So in this case, the length of n is what? Five, right? So length of n um, minus one. So 10 to the fourth is 10,000. And then we subtract one from this, whoops, this should be power. And that will actually give us the 999. Okay, and then we also need the opposite to be true. So if we had a number like 9999, then the next biggest palindrome would be 100,001. I think that's the right number. Yeah, okay. So we basically just need to do the reverse of this. So in this case, uh, we basically just need to uh, do the opposite, right? Okay, so we're going to say possible solutions um, dot append. So yeah, um, yeah, if we have a number like, yeah, never mind, sorry, I'm rambling here. So possible solutions dot append, um, let's see, 10 to the length of n plus, oops, we don't need to do that because we already stored the variable length of n plus one. Okay. So that's our five solutions. Now we need to actually find which one is closest uh, to our result. So we're gonna say diff equals to the float uh, infinity. Now what we need to do is our result is going to be zero because we haven't found anything yet. And the we need to basically, because n is actually a string, we need to represent it as a integer. So n int equals integer of n. And now we basically need to, need to go through all the candidate possibilities and actually find which one is the best one. So we're gonna say for candidate in um, possible solutions, what we're gonna do is if a candidate actually equals uh, n, somehow we generated the same value. Um, in the problem description, it told us that you can't use the same value as the closest palindrome, so we just skip it. So we're gonna say, if the candidate actually equals to n as an int, uh, then we just continue because there's nothing we can do there. Otherwise, um, we basically just need to find um, our best solution here. So. How are we going to do this? So we're going to say if the absolute value of the candidate minus um, n as an int is less than the, the current difference, then our new best difference is the absolute value of the candidate minus the integer n, um, no, sorry, n as an int, and then our result is now this candidate. Um, now, if in this case, um, our candidate actually equals to uh, the difference, then we basically just need to take whatever the new best candidate is, right? If, if the distance between um, two palindromes that we have as a candidate is actually the same, then we just need to take the smaller one uh, numerically. So we're gonna say else, oops, sorry, else if uh, the absolute value between the candidate, oops, this should be candidate, uh, absolute value of candidate minus uh, n as an int actually equals to our current best difference. And like I said, we just need to take the minimum of whatever our current solution is and the current candidate because we want the smaller one numerically. Um, and then at this point, all we need to do is just return our, our result. And I think it needs to be a string. Yeah, so we just need to cast our result back to a string and we're done. Now, all we need to do is just implement this half to palindrome, which is basically just going to take a number like one, two, three, um, and then flip that to be three, two, one. And this is relatively straightforward. 
Okay, my recorder seemed to cut out there. So all we need to do is actually implement the half to palindrome function here. So let's do that. So half to palindrome. And we're going to pass in self the number we need to flip and then whether it's even or not. And you'll see why that matters in a second. Because if we have a number like one, two, three, um, we really just need to flip the one, two. Um, because that part is the part that actually gets flipped and then the three will kind of just stay the same. Um, we don't need to really do anything there that kind of just stays as our base. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say that the result is equal to our number here. Now, if the number is not even, um, then we just want to cut out the kind of the the last position. So we want to cut out the three. And all we want to do is just mirror the one and the two, uh, because there's no reason to flip the three here, we just need to flip the one and the two. So we're going to say if not, uh, even, sorry, if not, uh, is even, then we want to just say that left equal, oh, sorry, uh, not left. So num equals num uh, divide by 10, right? So if we have one, two, three, um, we will just have one, two, right? Okay, so now what we need to do is just basically just flip this number. And how are we going to do that? So we're going to say while uh, left, sorry, why do I keep calling it left while the number is greater than zero, we're going to say that the current result equals the previous result uh, times 10 plus whatever the number that's left uh, modulo 10. So this is basically how we basically flip uh, the number, but flip the kind of positions of each of the things. So one, two, three, uh, will turn into three, two, one. So that is what we do. So we basically that is our new result. And then we need to divide um, the current number. Why do I keep calling it left? Jesus. Um, I guess it's the left half of the thing. So we need to basically take our number divide by 10 each time. Um, and then that will be all we need to do. So we're just simply going to return the result here. Uh, and we are done. Okay, so yeah, I think that should be fine. Let's just run this. Ugh, great. Where is this? Uh, God, where is it? Len n divide by two minus what the hell? Oh God, yeah. Okay, there you go. There we go. That's why we run it. I is not defined. Great. Fuck. Yeah, there you go. I hate these problems. First is not defined. <laughs> yes. First half. Great. Oh, it's been a long day, guys. It's been a long day. Can't. Oh my god. <laughs> this is just embarrassing. Sorry. Uh, okay. There we go. Let's submit it now. And oh god, thank god that was accepted. Cool. Now, what is the time and space complexity? Okay, time and space complexity. It's actually simpler than you might think. Uh, for the time, obviously, we have five candidates that we've done. Oops, I can clean this up. Uh, we have five candidates here that we've defined. And we've not really done anything that crazy to create them. We kind of just parsed out part of a string. Um, and then we did this um, kind of flipping the number. Um, and that flipping of the number basically is going to be, you know, at the worst case, n divided by two, because we need to flip half of the um, array here. So asymptotically, the time complexity is just, you know, five times big O of n, but we know that the constants just go away asymptotically. So it's just a uh, big O of n. For the space complexity, again, we have this uh, function here where we need to create um, our palindromes. And this is just going to take big O of n space. Uh, to basically create that. So yeah, it's just big O of n in uh, time and space. It's yeah, th this problem sucks. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Um, you it, finding these three um, of the closest palindrome is, I guess, reasonably intuitive, but then coming up with the fact that you need the 999s and the edge case with the, you know, the the next digit plus one. Uh, it's just yeah, annoying. It's I guess this is a hard question for a reason. But hopefully this video helped you. If it did, uh, leave a like and a comment, even if it's flaming me for my terrible explanation, helps with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.